Hey everyone! Today we're diving into a piece of cinematic history that is as controversial as it is transformative. It's none other than D.W. Griffith's 1915 film The Birth of a Nation. This film, folks, is a trip back in time but not necessarily to a place we'd all like to visit. The Birth of a Nation isn't just any old silent movie, it was a blockbuster of its time, setting box office records and changing the way films were made. But here's the kicker, it glorified the Ku Klux Klan and portrayed African Americans in deeply offensive ways. Yeah, it's a tough pill to swallow. Now why am I talking about this century-old film? Because it tried, quite successfully at the time, to reshape America's narrative about the Civil War and Reconstruction. It painted the Klan as heroes, can you believe that? And African Americans as villains. It was an attempt to rewrite history, to influence public perception and policy. So what made this film so influential? First off, it was a technical marvel. Griffith introduced advanced camera techniques, narrative storytelling, and massive battle scenes that hadn't been seen before. This wasn't just a film, it was an experience. But let's talk themes, seven to be exact, woven throughout this controversial piece. First, the South was a place of honor, great civility until trampled on by the Yankees. Second, the North took advantage of the South Third. The South consisted of real people, the North was not, and the black people were not equal to the Southern white people at all. Fourth, proper courting. The film features various personal relationships, Ben and Elsie Phil and Margaret Stoneman and Lydia. It distinguishes between relationships based on divine plans, like Ben and Elsie, and those rooted in evil, like Lynch and Elsie. Proper relationships take time to develop and require gentleness, contrasting with rushed and unnatural connections. Fifth, manifold tragedies of war. Beyond the battlefield, the film depicts the personal tragedies caused by war. Boyhood friends separated and reunited only in death. Blossoming loves abruptly ending. Governments turning against each other and leaders becoming targets for discontent expression. These themes provide insight into the film's complex portrayal of history, relationships, and honor. Sixth, Perseverance of Southern Honor. Despite the South's ultimate defeat in the Civil War, Griffith portrays Southern forces as heroic underdogs. Southern honor and nobility redeem every defeat they face. For instance, Ben Cameron's troops, despite hunger and outnumbering, manage to take two entrenchments and display courage and grace. Even in tragedy such as Flora's death, the preservation of Southern honor remains central. These themes ranged from the glorification of the Klan to the demonization of the newly freed slaves. This was all propaganda and recalled a theory that the South was much different than what the history had described it as. This is not right or helpful, and when you consider that more 200 million Americans had seen the movie by 1946, how helpful do you think it was to shape their opinion? What would you think if you saw something like this? Would you believe it to be true? Could this movie have delayed civil rights in our country for almost 50 more years? These questions are hypothetical here, but need to be answered before the movie or social media video could do the exact same thing. Each theme served a purpose to stir up fear and nostalgia for a pre-Civil War South, a white supremacist utopia that never really was. Despite its initial success, the film's legacy is rightly tarnished. It was one of the first films shown in the White House by President Wilson. It sparked protests and riots, and it was even banned in several cities. Fast forward to today and the birth of a nation serves as a stark reminder of the power of media in shaping public opinion and the dangerous consequences of unchecked narratives. So why is this important now? Because understanding the impact of this film helps us recognize the ongoing struggle against racism and the manipulation of historical narratives. It's a call to be vigilant about how history is presented and to strive for a more truthful, inclusive recounting of our past. Thanks for tuning in. This dive into the birth of a nation isn't just about understanding a film, it's about understanding ourselves and our society. This is Educide, my name is Michael Cunningham, and as an Educide researcher, I want to point out these facts to you so you will know. Now, you know, what are you going to do about it? Until next time, keep questioning, keep learning.